One, I own a house a couple of houses down from a school, so this was bound to happen eventually. When it's time for the kids to go home, my street is lined bumper to bumper with parents to pick up their kids. The sidewalks are full of families who walk all the way to their cars. I often have to pick up balloons, snack packaging, old homework worksheets, and general garbage that the kids drop. If you're trying to get home around the same time the school lets out, there's no way you're going to get there before the blockade the parents make is gone. This has been a problem for the few years we've lived here. There's two places the kids let out, my street, which is a small cul-de-sac with the school at the top, and a main road that's open all the way down to a baseball park, with a wider road to allow street parking and two-way driving. Obviously, if you can't find parking, the tiny residential road isn't the way to go. There are three cars at my home, my car, my roommate's car, and my husband's utility van, which he parks on the road to avoid blocking our roommate since she's frequently in and out. Fridays. Today, I work from home. So when I finished work, I poked my head out the window to look at my fruit tree I have near my driveway. It's spring. I keep excitedly looking for blooms. And I notice a big white Buick SUV in the middle of my driveway, blocking both spots for my car, which my husband was using since I was home, and my roommate's spot. Honestly, why would you park in somebody's driveway? So on top of these entitled parents blocking up a small residential road, this person decided to take up a private residence's driveway. I got on the phone with the non-emergency police and took pictures of the vehicle in plate. Then I got my husband's keys and backed his vehicle up to block the SUV into my driveway and I waited. Fifteen minutes later, the mom, bug-eye sunglasses, big old diamonds on her jewelry, and wearing athleisure, and she comes around to hop in the driver's seat and smiles and waves at me sitting on my steps. Honestly, she probably thought I was the homeowner's kid or something because I'm in my early twenties, rather than the homeowner. Hi, I hope you don't mind. You're trespassing. Why would you park in a private driveway? Sorry, won't do it again. We were just leaving. She was being really dismissive and avoiding eye contact despite taking the sunglasses off. I don't care, you have no right to park in my property. I'm on the phone with the police. It was just for a second. I was just picking up my daughter. It doesn't matter, you don't live here. You don't park here. At this point, I realize the non-emergency police aren't going to pick up, so I hang up and decide to fuck with her a bit. She got in her SUV and dismissively waved at me. So I got in my vehicle that was blocking her in and waited, pretending to still be on the phone. She starts trying to back out of my driveway because... There's a little bit of a gap between my utility van and my neighbor's car, but it was definitely too small for this Buick. I would like to point out this vehicle has a scuffed front bumper, so I had a feeling she has no special awareness outside of her backup camera. Every time she backed up, I honked, still pretending to be on the phone. She tried again, I honked again. She looked at my grass, and I was about to start recording her, in case she tried to go through my front yard. I honked again. If she kept trying to back out and hit my big-ass utility van, she would certainly lose. She gets out of her SUV and comes up to my van, recognizing she can't do anything without making it far worse for herself. Her face was visibly patchy from the distress, and she asked again, Are you calling the police? Yes, you're illegally parked on my private property, that's illegal. I don't care if it's for five seconds, don't fucking do it, you don't live here. Her kid got out of the car, and I decided that was enough. So I waited for her to get back in her SUV, and I parked my van back in its rightful spot and let her out. After that, I called the school and gave them the license plate number, Nothing will probably come of it, but I don't think she'll park in someone's driveway again anytime soon. I'll take the asshole points because there's a child involved. But you shouldn't put your child in situations like this anyways. 2. After reading and listening to stories from Reddit for over a year now, I have dreamed of the day I would encounter a Karen or entitled parent in the wild. Never expecting it to ever happen, but today was the day, and boy what an encounter it was. So for a little bit of background, 
My grandma works in a medium-sized dairy farm as a kind of manager, and I, 18 and female, help her out from time to time. We have a thing called a milk filling station. It's basically a vending machine where you can buy fresh milk from us. It's one euro per liter. We're located on a hill a little outside a small village and surrounded by meadows and forests, so we do get some hikers or families on a nice walk from time to time, especially on the weekends, and they usually look at the calves and buy some milk. One shift here usually includes four people. Everyone has different jobs to fulfill, so most of the time you're alone just doing your tasks, and my job is essential for the milking process as it includes bringing the cows to the milking station and back to their herds. Now on to the actual story. As I've mentioned, I'm alone most of the time just doing my thing, running around inside the farm. It's a restricted area. We have signs up since it can be quite dangerous. But the gates are open to make work easier and for ventilation so theoretically everyone could walk in. Still, I was kind of surprised when I, in the midst of literally shoveling cow shit, were met with a rather annoyed <coughs> behind me. I turned around, shovel still in hand, and saw a woman, maybe in her mid-thirties, standing before me, way too overdressed to be seen anywhere near a farm. She also didn't look like she was on a casual walk with her family. At least I wouldn't do one in the high heels she was wearing. She was looking at me rather angrily, and I immediately knew that this probably was the day I'd been waiting for, although I never expected it to be here of all places. Before I could even so much as open my mouth, she already started speaking in a very condescending tone to me. Finally, I've been looking for someone to help me for ages. Why are none of you doing your job and being there when you're needed? I was instantly annoyed with this woman because how dare she come in here and talk to me like that? And also, what job was she referring to? Because I, for one, was doing mine right at this moment, and it was strictly timed. I had to get stuff done with zero time to listen to this lady. Still, I try to give her the benefit of the doubt and be nice. Sorry, if you're referring to the office in the front, there usually is no one since we're all in here doing our job. What's the problem? Maybe I can help. I thought that maybe she's had a flat tire or something around here and needed help because I legitimately had no idea what someone dressed like her could want on a dairy farm. She just scoffed at me. Ah, oh, unbelievable! You should be over there in case someone needs your help like I do. Anyways, your milk is too expensive. I'm sorry, what? I said your milk is too expensive. I want the better price. She was saying every word slowly and loudly, as if she thought I was disabled. Oh, are you talking about the vending machine? I'm sorry, but that's a fixed price. I can't change that. And in my opinion... I didn't ask for your opinion. It's way cheaper at the supermarket. But my daughter wanted to try fresh milk, so we drove here. You should match the price at the supermarkets, or you won't sell much. Man, we're not a supermarket. We're selling the leftover fresh milk so it doesn't go to waste. She cut me off again. What? That's leftover milk? Ugh. And to imagine my daughter could have drank that. Now, for clarification, when I said leftover milk, I meant that it was still fresh milk. As in barely out of the cow fresh that we weren't able to sell to the company which collects our milk because they have fixed numbers and if we produced more milk than those numbers, we would have to throw it away. But with the vending machine, at least some of it still gets sold. If you want fresher milk than that, you would have to milk the cow right into the bottle. I started to try to explain this to the EM, but she immediately cut me off. Again. No, no, this is unacceptable. Neither me nor my child will drink old milk. And then the dreaded sentence came, I want to speak to your manager. I'd already had enough of this bullshit, pun intended. And as I've already said, a strictly timed job that I had to get back to. Because we were in the middle of milking our cows and this lady was literally holding up the whole process by holding up me. So I was more than happy to agree and get her to my manager, my grandma, and have her out of my hair. I just motioned for her to follow me and speed walked in the direction of the front office, while the lady was trying to keep up in her high heels without breaking her ankles. Now, our office is kind of another building and the closest door to us was unlocked, so we had to walk around the building. 
across the parking lot for the workers and through another entrance. That happened to be right beside the boxes we kept the newborn calves in. This also was the place where I met the before-mentioned daughter of the EM. The girl was maybe ten years old and happily watching the calves and petting them when we came into view. As soon as she saw her mom, she ran to her and started excitedly jumping up and down. Mom, mom, look at the cute calves! She dragged her mom over to the boxes. Look, it's so cute! I named her Emma, can we keep her, please? I expected the EM to maybe say something along the lines of, A cow is not a pet, or, we don't have the space, or, maybe. I don't know how to take care of a cow, but boy was I wrong. Instead, the mom turns to me and asks, completely serious, How much are these? Now, although we do sell our male calves since they are of no use to us, I for one wasn't sure how much exactly this calf was worth. Pretty sure there was a registration process involved in owning a cow and in no way, shape or form authorized to just sell a calf like that. And on top of that, cows aren't exactly animals you can just put in your yard and be done with. I'm sorry, but... No, I asked how much it is, tell me. Ma'am, that's a cow, not a pet. I know, but your milk is way too expensive anyways. Just sell me one of those if my daughter wants it, and we will have our own really fresh milk. At this point, I strongly considered just walking away, because there was no way this woman could be serious. She dead ass wanted to buy an animal that would be around 1.40 meters high and 700 kilograms heavy. Strong enough to kill you if you handled them wrong. Not only that, but a cow of a breed that needs to be milked twice a day because it produces as much milk as possible, which is around 30 to 50 liters at our farm. All that because one euro per liter for fresh milk apparently was too much, and her daughter thought her calves were cute. They are, but that's not the point. Plus, you need to properly take care of them, feed them right, and just getting a calf won't give you instant milk. She has to grow up, get pregnant, give birth, etc. All around this, EM would have to wait for another 24 to 28 months until her calf starts giving milk, and then repeat the process every year. So she would have new calves to take care of every year just to keep her one cow running, so to speak. Instead of telling her directly how stupid, time and money consuming this idea is, I decided to try and take the diplomatic way. Ma'am, I understand, but it's not that easy. I'm afraid I'm not able... Then get me someone who is able. I want to speak to your manager anyways. Why do you have to be such an incompetent worker? How old are you? Fifteen? Children shouldn't talk back to adults. That's where I've had it, so I just blurted out the best thing I could think of at the time. I am an adult, and you should stop talking to me like that. I'm not obligated to help you, and in fact, we could sue you for trespassing on private property. How dare you threaten me, young lady? That is no way to talk to a person older than you. Learn some respect. I demand to speak to your manager. I will get you fired for this. As if she was called, my grandma stepped out of the building right at that moment, probably because she heard the commotion. What's going on here? Oh, good. Are you the manager of this place? the moment yes how can i help you this worker of yours was incredibly rude she threatened me and my daughter and refused to help us she even tried to assault me right before you came outside i don't know what would have happened if you hadn't been on time yam was trying to squeeze some fake tears out at this point quickly swiping them away with her finger before they could ruin her very thick layer of makeup wanted was to ask if we could get the milk you are selling a little cheaper and my daughter really likes this calf over there so we thought about buying it my grandma was just silently listening to this woman's story eyes crossed and eyebrow raised because she could smell the bullshit from three miles away ma'am this is my granddaughter you're talking about and i know for a fact that she wouldn't do any of that em went awfully quiet at that so about the milk I maybe would have helped you out if you hadn't just lied to my face, but now I kindly ask you just to pay the full price as everyone else does, and the calf, I'm afraid, I won't be able to sell it to you. This is outrageous. I'm a paying customer. I would pay for this calf. Why are you refusing? 
My daughter wants a cow, and she likes this one here. Her name is Emma. Ma'am, that won't give you a cow. It will give you a bull. It's a male calf. You're lying. You just don't want to sell it because it's pretty. My grandma just silently pointed to the big male symbol on the side of the box, clearly labeling it as a boy. At this point, the EM just huffed and mumbled something about stupid, uneducated people from the countryside, and I should never come back here ever again. Which I would also really appreciate. The entitled girl was whining loudly about her Emma, while her mom was dragging her back to their expensive-looking car and my grandma and I watched them drive away before having a good laugh about the whole story. 3. So there's a lot more to this backstory than what I'm going to put here. Years ago, after the housing crash in 08, my dad began hauling mobile homes. Surprisingly or unsurprisingly, as they're cheaper than normal houses, this industry actually picked up pretty good, and he was extremely busy. I had just gotten out of the military and had a new wife and child to look out for and was having trouble finding a job. My dad asked me if I wanted to drive a pilot truck for him. If you have ever seen an oversized load on the freeway with a car or truck in front or behind them with flashing amber lights, that's a pilot truck. Private pilot car and truck services cost a dollar a mile at the time, more depending on the difficulty of the route and parking job. My dad wanted it done cheaper, obviously, as anyone would do, so we came up with an agreement that he would finance a truck for me to use to pilot for him permanently. The truck payment would come out of my pay, and I keep the truck full time to use however I want outside of scheduled work. The work schedule fluctuated enough to where I couldn't work another job, but we were doing at least four loads a week, and sometimes as many as seven. My dad would make 1 to 1.3 thousand on average per load. After you take away all his costs, he was bringing home on the slow months 9,000 ish and on good months 15,000 ish, give or take. In theory, all was supposed to be smooth. We agreed on a flat rate of 3,000 per month, which isn't all that bad for the time. He was covering the truck payment and all the fuel for the loads for my truck. I had to make sure I replaced any fuel I used for personal use, which was all more than fair to me. My wife was working at the time, so our dual income combined would set us up well with a second vehicle that was essentially free. But lo and behold, it takes about a month for it all to go to shit. I'm working about four to seven days a week, and it's more than what we agreed to. A private pilot driver normally shows up when the house is prepped to haul, and they drive you to the destination and collect their payment and leave. Now, obviously, you have some who go above and beyond and do extra. I'm prepping the houses to haul while my dad sits in his truck. I won't get into details, but ideal houses can get done in 20 minutes or less. But pain in the ass houses, in bad lots, too close to other houses, can take an hour plus of pretty physical labor. I'm also staying once we get to the destination and helping park the houses which can include moving debris, dealing with other homeowners. People tend to come out and watch and get real antsy when you're trying to maneuver a house near the car's house and property. None of this extra stuff was discussed when we agreed to this, but my mom called me more than a few times to make sure Dad isn't doing too much physical work since he's doing me a favor and giving me a free truck. Major contention point number one. My mom called me every couple of days, telling me to bring the truck by so she could get hay and feed her horses. Not asking. I did this the first couple of times because she's my mom. She wouldn't clean the truck bed out, which, when I brought it up to her, she would brush off with, it's a truck, what do you expect? So I stopped bringing it after that. We got into this huge argument, and she gave me the ultimatum of bring the truck, or she's reporting it's stolen. I don't engage. I call my dad and ask him if it's in mom's name. No? Okay. Me and dad have the exact same name, so no biggie. Major contention point number two, the pay. All the stuff we agreed upon never happens. I was paid my first two loads, about $600 in cash. That's great. I work the rest of the month, and my dad starts giving me excuses about things wrong with his truck and needing repairs. Okay. 
but his truck is never in the shop and we're still running every day. We get to the end of month two, and I still have only made $600. So based on the agreement, I'm owed $5,400 or in the neighborhood. So it's all about to come to a head, and I'm too stupid to realize it. I go to my parents' house one weekend, we're not working, to talk to my dad. At this point, the amount of money owed and time worked is putting a major strain on my marriage. Me and my dad start talking, and I'm getting really annoyed, as he's clearly doing everything in his power to not talk about work. Finally, I just blurt out that I need to be paid. I haven't gotten anything since the $600 for the first two loads. I didn't realize it at the time. But my mom has been eavesdropping from their bedroom, and she storms out immediately screaming about how ungrateful I am, and I'm taking advantage of them. I don't let her use the truck that she needs when I can just use my car. Mind you, my mom has had a truck this entire time. A 2002 F-250, but my dad bought a 2009 Toyota Tundra for the business, my truck. She starts going off about how I made my dad late to a pickup once. I got a flat on the way there and my dad didn't prep the house at all while waiting for me. So she's going off this whole time while I'm staring at my dad, who's avoiding eye contact. Finally, after she tells me to get out of the house and leave her truck, I just ask him if he's going to pay me. He looks me dead in the face and says, I think I've been more than fair, and leaves the room. So I leave, in the truck, and my mom blows up my phone the entire drive home with calls and texts. Once I get home, I start reading them. I shit you not, these are some of the gems. You disrespectful little bitch. Don't ever come to my fucking house again. I hope you and your horror rotten hell, you'll never get a fucking dime. Wow, so needless to say, I'm done. I enroll in community college with VA benefits. Two weeks go by and dad texts me. I need you at factory name at 5 a.m. Ignored. The next day, dad and mom... We need the truck back so we can have your sister drive it for dad. Ignored. Two weeks later, while at the movies, the truck is repossessed. Later find out that there was never a payment made outside of the down payment. This ruined my family relationship with all of them. My dad passed last year, without us ever resolving anything. 4. So I live on a ranch, and we own some cattle. Hay has been really expensive lately, so we needed to sell some cows to afford hay. We had a listing on Facebook Marketplace and some other places about cattle for sale. We had some cows ready for butcher, so we put them in another pen. A lady DMs us and asks if she can come to the property and take a look. We agreed on a time, and then discussed what type of cows we had. The day the lady was supposed to arrive, she seemed to be running late. We waited and she didn't show up. Later, she apologized for not showing up, and she asked if she could swing by the next day. I told her that I was going to be doing some busy work, but I'll probably be free later in the day, so it was settled. Next day, I was running some hay to our cows, and when I pulled into the driveway, her car was there. I get out, and immediately I'm met with, Where have you been? Oh, you're here early. I said I was doing some stuff with the cows, but I've got some time to do this real quick. So I take her to the pen, and she looks in. She points to the other pen and says, Why are they separated? Shouldn't these guys be together? Oh no, we're butchering them this summer, so we put them in there so we can fatten them up a bit. Butcher? Huh. You torture these wonderful creatures? Now, I'm not one to judge someone who's against animal abuse. In fact, I am with them. Some of these big industries do treat their animals badly, and it's a problem. I am not one to do that. Cows give us food. So I make sure that my cows are taken care of properly. But what is this lady expecting? I don't care if people like meat or don't. Eat it or not. I could give two shits. But she came out to a ranch. A cattle ranch. There's bound to be co-ed heading for butcher. Oh ma'am, I assure you, these cows are treated like kings. I make sure their death is quick and painless. But these are the cows you're looking for. She just scoffed. I take her by the pen we were supposed to be looking at. So how is this Karen an entitled parent? Well, she had a kid in her car. She was buying him a cow as a pet. 
She had a small trailer, probably only big enough for one car. At this point, she called him out of the car. So which one do you like? I like that one. This kid pointed to a calf. This calf was too young to be weaned, taken from his mom, so he would have to be sold with his mom. If you want that one, you're going to have to buy that red Angus right there. That's his mom, and he's too young to leave her yet. The EP has a disgusting look. Do I have to buy both? Yes, ma'am. But since she's a mom, she's very protective, so let's find another car. Mom, I want that one. My baby wants that one. It's just so cute and small. I don't want to get anything too big. So if that's the case, you should go look for some miniature cars. I know some sellers and I can get you their contact information. Yeah, but I'm already here. Hey, can I go pet the cow? No. Sure, sweetie. What's the big deal? He just wants to pet a cow. Rule number one with cattle. Be aware of your surroundings. If you see a cow with a calf and the mom is high-headed, don't go near it. This kid is too young to understand, but his mom is too fucking stupid to look out for her goddamn kid. Now, the mom of the calf this kid went to go pet is a total bitch. She will not put up with anything. So the kid crawls under the panel, and he looked about, about ten or so. Well, I had to try to go into the pen, but I needed a cattle prong. A cattle prong is just a long rod that delivers a light shock to the cattle. It's the equivalent of a shock collar to dogs. Except it's just long, so people can stay safe and keep their distance. Her son goes to touch the calf. And the mom is giving all the warning to stay the fuck away. He gets too close, and it freaks out. Cows kick to the side, not to the back like a horse. So the calf kicked this kid square in the side of the head. He fell over and started screaming. So did his mom. I hate to say it, but it felt so good to see that entitled Karen see what happens when her dumbass doesn't listen to professionals. But now with all the screaming, the rest of the cattle were wound up. I get my cattle prong, rush into the pen... And as the mom was about to start charging this poor kid, I start herding her away from him, and I get him out of the pen. I gave him back and told her to get the fuck off my property. She started yelling at me, but I just tuned her out. I can't stand people like that. Moral, listen to the people who know what they're talking about. 5. This story isn't just one entitled parent, but a whole ton of entitled parents. So some background. Finding Dory was the new movie at the time and I, female to male transgender, was around 15. My mom decided that I, my baby brother, and she would see Finding Dory. As it was the weekend and my other brother was out with his friends or gaming with them. Or he might just not want to come. Anyway, it was just the three of us. My baby brother was about a year or so by then so he wasn't able to join in. Now to the story. We got our popcorn, drinks and candy, and we were waiting for the movie to start. The other parents, many, entitled parents, but a few were like my mom, who wouldn't allow their kids to run wild. Come in soon after we did. My mom liked to come into a movie theater early, so we could get the seats near the top row. The movie was about to start when some employee, I assume a manager of some sort, walked into the movie theater. I couldn't make him out in the sea of people in the rows below, but I heard him say the worst thing any moviegoer could hear. As we have so many children, no joke, the children were double the number of adults and teenagers, we decided to keep the lights on to not scare the children. With that, the employee left, sealing our fate. The children behaved for the first ten or so minutes of Finding Dory, and those were a blissful ten or so minutes because things went downhill fast. See, I think the children would have been better behaved if the lights were off. As lights off in a theater has this be quiet and watch the movie signal to it, with the lights on, it had the connotation of the movie is yet to start, so go wild, it seemed. Soon the children were restless. They got up and started to play in their row quietly. 
which slowly grew to treat the whole theater as a playground. I'm not sure why no one left to complain. For all I know, the parents trying to keep their kids from entering the mayhem were too frazzled to think about that. Or someone was fearful of the employee shutting off the film midway through. With children hopping on seats and running through rows and down the aisles, I'm shocked no employees came to check the commotion. Then the real stars of the story came to play, the entitled parents. It seemed one kid hit another kid in the mouth somehow. Then two pairs of entitled parents began to scream about how dare they raise an unruly child, threatening to tell an employee what happened, and suing the parents into the ground. I only watched in horror, glancing from the film to the entitled parents screaming, unsure which was more entertaining. Since I didn't have my phone on hand, I couldn't record what was before me. The parents with the kid who got kicked, he somehow wasn't bleeding from the force of the kick, decided to let him eat some candy to calm down before he'd returned to the fray. This one incident seemed to give a reason for entitled parents to go off on other entitled parents for their entitled kids, while defending their own kids. Throughout this, some kid decided to throw popcorn in the air, screaming, Snow! Other kids copied this, too. Soon the rows below were suffering, having popcorn rain down. The top row, where I and my mom were, was relatively untouched. Then someone from the row above us got tired and began to go off on some of the entitled parents, pointing out that this is a movie theater, and they should have control over their entitled kids. This only caused the entitled parents to defend their precious angels, screaming that this was a movie theater, and the parents going off on them have to be quiet during a film. Ironic, I know. This lasted throughout a mass portion of the film. The children only settled at the climax action part of the film at the end of it. The parent who tried to argue to the entitled parents grumbled back to his seat five minutes after arguing with them. The film ended, around 80 minutes of the film having been used as an excuse for entitled parents to not parent their entitled offspring, and my mom and I grabbed our things and left the theater. The one or two parents who kept their children from turning the cinema into their own personal playground decided to complain to the management, a higher-up employee, for what happened, as no employees entered throughout the film. I never went back to the cinema since that day, and I can't watch Finding Dory again without thinking of what had happened in that theater. Hey everybody, Hal Freezer here, and thank you very much for listening to The Impractical Proudness of Parents. Hi Pop! Episode 103. And thank you very much to everybody who allowed me to use their stories in this video. Please do boink the like button before you go, I greatly appreciate it. It makes YouTube do things like say, hey, you see this video over here? You know, other people liked it, you might like it too. Yeah. And before we go on, I'd also like to give a shout out to the author of the final story there, Reddit user Phantom Ferret, and I'll include a link to their YouTube channel by the same name in the description next to their story. Head on over and have a look. And now we'll move right along to Hellfreezer's question of the day. And today's question is... Okay, this one is inspired by a question that Donovan sent in, but not exactly as was asked. Do you think as television shows are getting shorter and shorter seasons as time goes on, and media like YouTube Shorts, TikTok, we all remember Vine and things like that, short form bursts of content are very, very popular, that we've always had short attention spans, but we're just over catered to in terms of the the longer form media we were given, or are we developing shorter attention spans as shorter form media becomes more prevalent? Speaking personally, I don't mind shorter seasons on TV shows, as long as it means I can then spend that money on other TV shows, which then gives you more variety. But I do miss the 20, 26 episode seasons of Star Trek we used to get, because that was just so much Star Trek was great. Most of them were good. Let me know what you think. Please pop your answer in a comment below. And with that, I'm going to head off for now. So until next time, thank you very much for listening, and take very good care of yourself.